more details. So what is a good company? So for good company, I actually believe there's three main component. So number one is financial sustainability. Lah. Okay, financial sustainability based on the numbers they can actually sustain. Uh, financial sustainability. Number two is uh, they must have attractive valuation. And number three is the business results reflected in financial. So of course, um, I think it's given that you must like the business model. Lah, so I didn't put it here. Okay. Uh, but uh, what I what you want to see more is this. When you said you like the business model, uh, does the business results, are they really reflected in the financial? So these are the three main components that have all have to be in place uh, okay, to help me determine is this a good company. Okay, so this is where the cost will come into place. Okay, so this is where uh, the cost, uh, the program they're about to launch, okay, they will actually share with you how do we actually see that the company has financial sustainability? How do we see that the company have attractive valuation? And of course, uh, from the books, how do we know that Okay, the business results are actually reflected in financials. Huh? Okay, let's start with the first one, uh, financial sustainability. So in the course, we will actually focus quite a bit on cash flow analysis. Okay, as we all know, cash is king, cash is king. Yeah? So really to know whether the company is it sustainable or not, whether it can continue. Okay. There are certain companies are uh, wow, new product launch, business very good. Wow, suddenly a lot of revenue come in, a lot of profits, but it cannot sustain. Uh. So, where are the places in the annual report you can actually see all this? Uh? So, the first thing first is this uh, we ask this question uh, okay, is the profit converted to cash flow? Or put it this way, uh, you know, what will sustain a business cash flow full stop? <laughs> Okay, so hopefully uh, it's clear profit is not equal to cash flow. Uh. So of course, again, all this I will actually explain between the cost itself. Profit is not equal to cash flow. Um, sorry. When a company is profitable, it doesn't mean that it has cash flow. Uh. So something to think about. So that's why when we talk about sustainability, can the company continue? We actually want to do cash flow analysis. So the first thing first we actually want to see is, is hey, is the profit converted to cash flow or not? Okay, maybe just uh, do a little exercise here. Okay, um, since you all have taken time trying to learn something. Now, what I've done here is this. I actually compare the net income after tax, which is profit after tax, compared with cash from operating activities. Uh. So the question I have here is this. Uh, do you all like what you see? Yes or no? Okay, I've actually did a comparison between income and cash flow from operating. Do you like what you see? Yes or no? Come on, come on. Don't be shy. If you all don't know, just make a guess. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, can you see? The profit is actually indeed generating cash flow. It's actually turning to cash flow. Uh. Okay, so in fact, um, if we actually want to do detailed analysis, uh, okay, we don't even look at profits. Profits is actually a very account for very accounting purposes. Uh. Okay, long story short, uh, can anyone uh share why does all company have to do PL statement? Which authority require company to do PL statement? Anyone can help me here? Ira, uh, thank you so much. Uh. So basically, the PL statement is actually for the purpose of tax accounting. So this profit is what we call accounting profit, not accounting profit, which is, um, uh, which is you know we just calculate it, okay, for the purpose of accounting tax. Now this accounting profit is not equal to cash profit, nah. So why is cash profit? Cash profit is really the cash, cohort cash can see, can touch, can feel that cash that come into the company's bank account. Okay, yeah. So that's why, in fact, uh, for us, what is most important is looking at this uh, cash for operating activities uh, so that we know that, hey, indeed, this company is generating cash flow. Uh. So there are certain companies, 
uh, their profit is quite high, then you see cash, eh, no cash coming in. No cash coming in. Okay, so this is what we mean by measure sustainability. Okay, like in this case, I'm quite happy. Yes, at least this company is generating cash flow. Okay, so of course, there are a few other tests that we keep a lookout for. Like for example, uh, you also have to look at capex versus operating cash flow. Huh? So what are capexes? Capexes are basically investment. Huh? Company keep investing. Huh? Okay, so the question here is this. Huh? If let's say this business, the only way for them to keep sustaining the cash flow is to keep sustaining the capex. Do you like this business or not? Okay, here's the question. Huh? So do you like a business whereby huh, in order to sustain the cash flow, you need to keep having capex? Do you like such business, yes or no? Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, of course, different uh, scenario can be different, but generally we actually don't prefer that. Uh, don't prefer that. Okay, again, like, take a close look at these numbers. Uh, do you like what you see? Do you like what you see? Okay, yeah. So, of course, uh, we need more data, lah, but just, of course, for the purpose of uh, trying to understand concept. Yes, uh, you can see that at least for the last three years, their capex is reducing and the cash flow is actually increasing. Uh. So, you know that, hey, you know, uh, you don't really need like keep pumping in cash uh, so as to sustain the cash flow. Okay. So, eventually, we need to tie in with the storyline. Uh, like, for example, you know, there's one period Singtel say, okay, because of 5G, um, they have to uh, invest in the capexes. They have to actually build in uh, what they call that base station, uh, build in uh, more infrastructure. So obviously the capex is going to be high. Lah. So the question here is this, hey, you know, are all these capexes going to convert into cash flow? Or are they just have to keep injecting, keep injecting, keep injecting? Okay, so from there, you can actually understand the business a lot better. So, of course, yes, uh, uh, I'll definitely prefer company. Uh, okay, as what Darren is saying, I definitely prefer company whereby, okay, the capex should actually keep reducing, whereas my cash flow should actually keep increasing. Uh. Okay. Okay, then, of course, uh, we also have to study the pattern of um, borrowing versus repayment. Uh, borrowing versus repayment. Um, you can actually see here. So what I've actually shown here is this. This is cash flow from financing activities. Okay, cash flow from financing activities. And, of course, uh, this is... Um, this is the... Uh, dividend, uh, dividend payout, uh, dividend payout, uh, okay, as you can see here. So, of course, it's also good to analyze okay, the company between the financing and dividend payout. Uh. Like, for example, in this case, what you are seeing here is this, uh, okay, you see a negative sign here. Negative sign is borrowing money from the bank or uh, repaying money from the bank. Anyone can help me here? So you see a negative sign, yeah? So down here, is it borrowing or repaying? Y'all yeah? don't say, uh, so don't say. Uh. <laughs> Anybody make a ground and make a guess? Borrowing or repaying? When it's a negative? Okay, just to help y'all, uh, if let's say, for example, negative means out of the pocket, nah? out of the company's pocket. Nah? So in this case, is it borrowing or repaying? Okay, thank you so much, uh, repaying. Yeah. So this company can actually keep repaying the cash flow and yet give out dividends. Uh. 
Okay, so do you like what you see or not? Company is actually paying money and giving dividends. Huh? Okay, do you like what you see? Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Huh? Yes, huh? yes. Okay, good. I have one question. How do you know they are repaying? So, of course, if you actually read the details of the financial statement, it's actually all stated there. Lah. Okay, it's actually stated there. Okay. Um, I don't have to guess. Lah. So, of course, I only get take a snapshot of the annual reports. Lah. So, again, you know, during the course itself, uh, we then we will actually delve into all these details. Lah. So, today is just an info session. Now, will you be comfortable whereby, let's say, all these numbers are positive? All these number are positive, and yet they still keep give dividends. Are you okay with that? Yes or no? All these numbers are positive, and yet they are all still giving dividends. Okay, so you know what I mean, now. So again, yeah, you then you like, you be worried. Hey, how come this company they are borrowing money and yet they're giving dividends? Okay, uh, so Tuan Ping. So um technically technically speaking it's not allowed lah. So dividends have to pay off from profits. Huh? Okay, there are actually rules that um uh, governs that. Okay, but of course money is money lah, so you can't really differentiate is this piece of money from borrowing or this piece of money from profit. Okay, but uh there are rules that say uh, dividends can only be given out from profits, huh? Okay, so yeah, so I, I'm, you know, these are the things that a lot of people didn't pay attention to, uh, but it actually tells a lot about the company. Uh, so there are actually a lot of very nice company out there. Wow, you know, very good business. And we give dividends. But for all you know, uh, down here, they are keep borrowing money. Yeah? Okay, then you'll be wondering, hey, what is this company doing? Uh, why are you borrowing money and giving out dividends? Okay, so again, something to take note of. Okay, so these are some of the example of cash flow analysis. Of course, uh, there is definitely a lot more than that. Um, again, like I said, today is just an info session. I can't be doing everything. So one other areas that we'll focus on is a financial risk analysis. Looking at all the ratios to actually make sense of the company. To see whether... You know, this company is financially healthy and also ratios again paint a very important picture. Huh? So for us to take a look. Okay, so um now a lot of time annual report, huh? okay, especially now uh, you don't even get the hard copy. Uh you only get soft copy. Uh. So again, from a retail investor, a lot of people actually uh didn't read the details. Uh. Like for example, uh, Okay, so there's a question about I, I, I actually, but those most anti borrow while well, people. Okay, nothing wrong with borrowing. I had I, I never said nothing is wrong with borrowing, but uh, if let's say this company has used for its funds, uh, has used for its funds, then uh, why is there need to give dividends? So, so of course a lot of things are not so straight cut la, not so clear cut la. Okay. So, but then, you know, these are the places we can pick up. So during the course itself, we will have discussion. Okay, nothing wrong with company borrowing money. Okay, nothing wrong with some company borrowing money and keep giving dividends. So the question here is, you know, the quantum. Lah. The question is quantum. Lah. If your dividend payout is super high and you pay a lot, you actually borrow a lot, you know, does it make sense or not? Okay, so of course, the quantum is also an important issue. So thanks for raising it. It doesn't mean that, oh, if this is positive, this is positive, it's definitely bad. No. Okay, but, you know, uh, what I'm trying to highlight here is this. If, let's say, the payout is super high, like this case, uh, can you see um, they are almost giving up all their profits here? Can you see? Their payout is actually very high. And if let's say their borrowing is also very high, uh, then you have to ask yourself, does it make sense? Oh, Srinta Ho, answer your question. Eh? Okay. Now, um, yeah, so sorry, the question I want to ask here is this. Uh, okay, 
Have you heard of this thing called key audit methods before in the annual report? If you heard of this before, don't mind just tell me type of one. If you never heard of this before, please tell me type of zero. Key audit methods. Wow, okay. <laughs> Okay, great, great. I'm glad I share. So, in fact, now, okay, the auditors have really done a very good job uh, to actually summarize all the potential issues. Okay, okay, sorry. I, potential issue is the wrong word. Uh. Uh, certain things, I would say that certain things they're not comfortable with, they actually do highlight under key audit matters. So, a lot of people, even they have an report, also don't know what to read. Uh, so, in fact, uh, this part is uh, very important. Uh. Okay, then it's actually good to read, especially if you want to see whether uh, they have any irregularities. Uh. So, so of course, uh, you have to know where exactly to find this part of uh, this part in the annual report. Okay, so hopefully I give you some ideas of what I mean by financial sustainability. So, um, predominantly is looking at the cash flow because cash is something that sustains the business. Uh, and of course, uh, we have to look at financial ratios. Uh, we also have to do qualitative analysis, uh, qualitative analysis uh, to actually make sure that, hey, you know, uh, there is no issues that are being flagged up by auditors. Okay, next, uh, we have to, a good company, the uh, valuation must be attractive. So again, for this year, it'll be quite interesting. I think, I believe that I can actually find companies in attractive valuation for this year, especially if let's say my prediction is correct, market come down, there'll be periods whereby company is cheap. So some of the easiest way to value a company is of course like PE ratio, um, dividend yield analysis, and of course things like price to book ratio. Uh. So uh, so the question here is this, uh, you know, uh, how to calculate numbers, uh, how to make sense of the numbers. Uh, like for example, in this case, 5.144, good or bad. Uh, so unfortunately, um, it's not so straightforward. Like, it doesn't mean that our oh, high is good, down is bad. So for certain ratios, it's only better for certain companies. Uh, so that is something you have to consider. Uh, okay. Or it doesn't mean that oh, P ratio, PB price to book uh, more than one is good, less than one is bad. No, no. It doesn't work this way. So you have to be very specific for certain types of companies. Uh. Okay. So we use this to help us value companies. And thirdly, to see whether, okay, this business, is it really as good as you think now? So you think that, okay, Grab is a good business, Tesla is a good business, is it really as good as you think? So one way to see is, you know, is the results being reflected in the financials? Uh, uh? So, uh, of course, again, we can do various comparison. One of the main comparison we actually do here is this, the CapEx versus the total assets versus the total revenue. Uh. Okay. So first thing first, uh, when you have capexes, uh, when you actually see company have capexes, that means they pump money in, uh, the asset should actually increase or decrease. Okay. So when company pump in, money uh, get into capex the assets uh, should it increase or decrease thank you so much uh, it should increase uh. so that is something we have to watch out for if let's say company pump in capex uh, and yet the assets are reducing <laughs> then we must be thinking hey what is happening here okay then the next thing here is this uh, so of course when asset increases the revenue okay do you expect to increase or decrease Okay, should you expect, okay, again, same thing, uh, increase. Uh. So, of course, uh, what you actually see here is, I believe, I think it's quite a no-brainer. Uh, so, you will actually like this kind of profile. Uh. You actually like this kind of profile. This company pumping capexes. Then, after that, asset increases and revenue increases. Okay, but then, okay, again, it's not so straightforward. Uh. You have to tie in with the storyline. Uh, tie in the storyline. Like, for example, there are certain businesses whereby, I have to pump in five years of capex first, then revenue will only come in later. 
Uh, so you have to tie in with all this storyline. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean that, oh, we should just look for a company. This one go up, this one go up, this one go up. No, not so straightforward. Okay, so, and and again, like I said, now end of the day is the business that matters. So business, uh, you also need to do some qualitative assessment. Okay, like one thing that I actually focus on is chairman statement. Are they growing according to plan? So this is uh, something to watch out for. Uh, and of course, uh, we can actually use some framework uh, to try to understand the competitive environment. Uh. Okay, uh, are they actually subjected to competition? Uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so of course, uh, by the look itself, uh, it seems quite easy. Uh. But then here is the thing. If you actually want to find a perfect company, uh, it never happens. Uh. Uh, I always have to joke. Uh, um, you know, we have a lot of criteria to find our spouse. Uh, our must can cook, can wash, treat you very well, give you money, uh, you know, say I love you every day and so on and so forth. Uh. Uh, so if you also have all these criteria, you realize you'll never get married. Uh. <laughs> Okay, so there's no such thing as a perfect spouse. Same thing, there's actually no such thing as a perfect company. Uh. Uh, so it's easy to say here that, oh, we should look at this. We should go for a company that, like that. We should go for a company like that. Okay, but you realize, uh, yes, uh, there are companies that pass this criteria, but don't pass that. Okay, so the question here is this. Uh, back to the title, financial state uh, analysis for stock investing. Uh. Okay, I'm not here training people to be auditor or not here training people accounting. So at the end of the day, I'm here to actually share how to use this skill to actually pick the right stock. Okay, so that is the challenge. Okay, so this is where you have to do comparison. Okay, end of the day, you know, we have to actually do certain comparison. So a lot of times it's not about finding the best or finding one that actually meet our criteria. It's actually compare across uh, uh, various companies to actually see hey which one really stand out and probably that is the one that is the most value for money value for your investment. Uh, 